The show begins with Patty sharing her experiences as a young woman dealing with the challenges of being overweight. She reflects on her entire adolescence marked by self-loathing towards her physique and relentless bullying at her high school, where she was cruelly labeled as Fatty Patty. One day at school, Patty suddenly passes out and collapses during her gym class. As she lies on the ground, a group of popular girls begins to mock her. However, Brick Armstrong, one of the hottest guys in the entire school, swiftly comes to her rescue and helps her get back on her feet. Afterward, with the help of her best friend, Nani, Patty asks Brick on a date to thank him for his help earlier. Unfortunately, he responds with a cold rejection, emphasizing that his actions were merely out of kindness. Following the upsetting rejection, Patty finds herself alone outside a store. Finding a bit of comfort in a candy bar, she later encounters a homeless man, who cruelly labels her as Fatty and tries to snatch her candy bar. In a burst of emotion, Patty lands a punch, breaking the man's nose. However, the man quickly retaliates and strikes a punch, resulting in her broken jaw. Three months later, the homeless man takes legal action against Patty. With this, we're introduced to Brick's father, Bob Armstrong, a lawyer who offers his services pro bono. In addition, he also has experience coaching beauty pageants and reflects on an incident that marked his downfall as a pageant coach. In a flashback, it is revealed that his client, Dixie Sinclair, ultimately loses when another contestant defeats her during a pageant finale. Struggling to cope with the defeat, her mother, Regina, intervenes and resorts to falsely accusing Bob of molesting her daughter. This unjust accusation subsequently results in his ostracism from the entire community, leading to his isolation from opportunities within both the legal realm and the pageant industry. Returning to the present, Patty's appearance has seemingly undergone a remarkable transformation during her recovery following the broken jaw. Immediately upon encountering Bob, she regards him as her knight in shining armor, resulting in an immediate and intense infatuation. Simultaneously, Bob is entranced by Patty's potential to shine as a beauty queen. Consequently, he abandons the initial strategy of pursuing a plea agreement and instead opts to argue for self-defense. Bob Bernard, a rival of Bob Armstrong, representing the opposing stance in the case, unveils a surprising revelation. He asserts that an eyewitness named Donald, the store clerk, has come forward to validate their argument. That evening, Patty revisits the store and seduces the clerk into providing false testimony on her behalf during the court proceedings. One evening, Cora Lee Armstrong, Bob's wife, organizes a charity gala to raise awareness for anal cancer. At the event, Patty makes an appearance and confronts Dixie and her mother Regina about the truth behind the false allegations against Bob. Regina, consumed by her desire to ruin Bob's reputation, hires a private investigator named Chase to monitor his activities. The next day, Patty visits the Armstrong residence to prepare for her upcoming testimony in court. During their conversation, Bob praises her for her inner and outer beauty and acknowledges that she is one of the few people to have faith in him recently. Unfortunately, Chase, who was spying on Bob from outside, takes a photograph of the two before promptly sending it to Regina. When the trial begins, Donald, the supposed eyewitness, claims to have no recollection of the incident. Patty then skillfully persuades the judge that she has acted in self-defense and the case is ultimately dismissed. Acknowledging Patty's beauty as his sole chance for redemption in the world of pageants, Bob attempts to change her perspective, urging her to embrace the role of a positive role model for girls struggling with weight-related issues. He then proposes that she enter beauty pageants with him taking on the role of her personal coach. However, Patty's mother strongly opposes this idea. Later that day, Bob crosses paths with Magnolia, Bernard's daughter, who intends to hire him as her pageant coach to provoke her father. To discuss their strategy, Magnolia then invites him to her room, seemingly to display her wardrobe for the upcoming pageant. Then, while she's changing in front of Bob, Chase, the PI, subtly takes more photographs of the two and sends them to Regina again. Meanwhile, at a support meeting attended by Patty's mother, a man named John shares his story of punching a girl. Instantly identifying him as the homeless man who sued her, Patty then devises a plan to sleep with John, only to later reject his advances as an act of revenge. 
Following her strategy, Patty accompanies John to a motel that evening. However, before she can set her plan in motion, John gets heavily intoxicated and dozes off. Fueled by anger over this missed opportunity, Patty then resorts to dousing John with alcohol and snatching his matchbook. Moments later, Bob, who's struggling with his own hardships, receives a call from Patty. Instead of resorting to arson, she decides to participate in pageants, defying her mother's objections. The following day, Patty wakes up in her bed, hung over and struggling to recall the events. At school, she walks through the hallway, her peers, including Brick, failing to recognize her. While in class, discussing local news, a student informs the class about a man in critical condition following a motel fire. Immediately, Patty starts to panic, recalling her encounter with John the previous night when she came dangerously close to setting him on fire. Nani, upon learning the details of the incident, decides to leave school early to conduct her own investigation at the hospital. Feeling increasingly guilty, Patty reaches out to Bob to seek his advice in this situation. Elsewhere, Coralie pays a visit to the Bernard's residence to meet Etta May. Surprisingly, when Bob Bernard answers the door without his shirt on, she offers to come inside and help him iron his shirt. Strangely, he leaves Coralie alone in his house as he heads off to investigate the motel fire case. While she's still there, Regina discreetly leaves behind an envelope containing photographs of Armstrong and Magnolia. Coralie then intercepts the envelope and meets Regina, pretending to require evidence for her divorce proceedings with Bob. After persuading her to send the photos through text, Coralie labels it as trafficking child pornography, effectively keeping Regina at a distance for the time being. After school, Patty and Nani try to retrace Patty's movements the night before and pay Donald, the store clerk, a visit. Donald then recounts the incident where Patty inadvertently flashed herself to him, noting that she wasn't wearing a bra. Upon discovering that she left her bra at the motel, Patty comes up with a scheme to retrieve it from the evidence locker. While Patty is inside the locker, Bob calls her to provide her with an update on the investigation. However, upon discovering her intent to steal evidence, he emphasizes that they require a strong alibi instead, as witnesses have seen her interacting with John, the homeless man. Subsequently, Patty and Nani return to Donald, confident that security footage from the store would support their efforts. Upon inspecting the video's timestamp, it becomes clear that it falls short of providing a reliable alibi. So, in a bold move, they decide to recreate the conditions of the previous night by getting Patty intoxicated. Unfortunately, this plan backfires, as it only leads to Patty being hospitalized at the exact facility where John is undergoing treatment. In a surprising turn of events, it is also revealed that Regina, who accused Bob of molesting her daughter, was having an affair with his underage son, Brick. As they drive away, the two get into a minor car accident on their way back home. Without hesitation, Regina swiftly exits the vehicle and flees the scene to avoid being spotted by any potential witnesses. Meanwhile, John notices Patty as she wanders through the hospital corridors and implicates her in the incident. However, Bob swiftly unravels the truth upon discovering the smoke alarm battery hidden in John's pocket. Only at that moment does it come to light that a match had inadvertently sparked the vodka-soaked bed as he tried to light a cigarette. Eventually, John confesses to falsely implicating Patty in order to clear his own name. Once the others have left, Patty approaches John seeking an apology for her broken jaw. However, he responds coldly, rebuffing her gesture. Frustrated by his apparent lack of remorse, Patty responds with a harsh remark, wishing for his death. To her astonishment, at that very moment, John suffers a sudden cardiac arrest and passes away. The following week, Bob takes Patty to Alabama to acquaint Patty with the world of pageants. Utilizing his connections to secure backstage access, he devises a plan to seek guidance from his mentor regarding Patty's lack of control. Although Patty agrees to accompany him, her sole intention is to seduce Bob during his time apart from his wife. While in Alabama, Patty comes across Stella Rose, the director of the Miss Bareback Buckaroo pageant and Armstrong's former mentor. During her time there, she also forms a friendship with the reigning pageant queen, Roxy. 
Yet, Roxy's friendly demeanor in the fiercely competitive world of pageants raises considerable doubts about her motives towards Patty. Meanwhile, back in their town, Nani's jealousy escalates to a new level as she becomes increasingly concerned about Bob potentially harming Patty. She then pays a visit to Donald, requesting to borrow his car. Nani then explains her urgent need to rescue Patty from what she perceives as a dangerous situation with the alleged molester, who is also her lawyer and pageant coach. While Donald offers to accompany her on the trip to Alabama, Dixie, who also happens to be present at the store, overhears their conversation. Seizing the opportunity, Dixie joins them and proposes that she also wants to come along, with the aim of gathering more evidence against Bob. This leads to an unexpected trio, Dixie, Nani, and Donald, taking off on a journey to Alabama with the mission of spying on Bob and Patty. During their road trip, a shocking revelation comes to light when Dixie confesses that her mother Regina fabricated the allegations against Bob Armstrong. Back in Alabama, Stella Rose proposes a strategy to Bob, adopting the roles of good cop and bad cop in an attempt to rein in Patty's unrestrained behavior. When Armstrong requests Patty to demonstrate her pageant walk, the outcome is far from ideal. Throughout their stay in Alabama, Armstrong assigns Patty tasks she resents, all under the guise of testing her ability to follow directions. However, Stella's plan serves as a cunning tactic for Stella to manipulate Patty, turning her against Bob and ultimately luring her into her own guidance. Fortunately, Bob quickly grasps Stella's scheme, leading to a confrontation in her hotel room. However, Bob is taken by surprise by her advances, exposing their romantic history. Later, Bob heads back to his hotel room, only to find Patty waiting there to seduce him. Already agitated by Stella's flirtatious behavior, Bob firmly declines Patty's advances. Crushed by his rejection, she then heads to a nearby bar to meet up with Stella and Roxy, seeking solace in their company. Returning to Georgia, a surprise visit from Coralie's sister Brandilyn and her children catches her off guard. At this point, the backstory of Coralie unfolds, shedding light on her upbringing in a trailer park. However, Bob rescued her from that life, leading her into the life she has now. Back in Alabama, Patty inadvertently sees the text messages exchanged between Stella and Bob. This ultimately leads her to the painful realization that they both are merely exploiting her rather than genuinely valuing her. Feeling betrayed and unsure, she then copes by taking part in a crawfish eating contest. In the midst of the contest, Bob makes a sudden appearance and implores Patty to place her trust in him once more. He then shares his own experiences with binge eating behaviors, leading Patty to find solace in their shared vulnerability. However, in an unexpected turn, she challenges Bob to demonstrate his loyalty by joining her in the eating contest. Therefore, in a gesture of understanding, Bob not only joins her, but also wins the competition. Subsequently, he confronts Stella Rose, who reveals her role as Roxy's coach for the Miss American Lady pageant, a competition in which Patty is also participating. Following her confrontation with Bob, Stella discloses to Patty her romantic past involving him. Taking it a step further, she also provides tangible proof in the form of an engraved necklace from him. Ultimately, this necklace becomes a pawn in Patty's plot to break apart Bob's marriage and claim him for herself.